talk a little bit about Microsoft 365 today and help you out. So let me share my web browser um, with you to help uh, show you a few things about Microsoft 365. I'm gonna explain a few things to you and then I'm gonna show you a few things on my Windows desktop that, uh, that help to show you what, what you get with Microsoft 365. And uh, some people use parts of it. Some people don't know what parts of it exist. So they don't know what's available to them when they actually subscribe to it. So the purpose today is to help you understand what it is and why or why not it might be uh, something you should uh, consider looking into. Okay, so today we're gonna try and answer the questions. Uh, what is Microsoft 365? It's a subscription, so we're going to take a look at the subscription plans and the pricing. And I'm going to go over the things that are included with micro, in Microsoft 365 and some tools that you may or may not have known about in Microsoft 365. Now, it's called Microsoft 365 for a reason. It's not just Office anymore. They used to call it Office 365. Now they call it Microsoft 365. And there's always something new they, they throw in. It's a continuously improving type of product. And I always discover something new that I, I didn't even realize was there. Okay, so first of all, it is not a product you buy one time. It is a subscription. The subscription includes a subscription to software applications. Uh, we'll go over those. It includes subscriptions that include updates to all of that software. So in the old days, when you bought a computer application in a box in a retail store, you might have bought it and then used it for a while. And then the company came out with a new version that you had to buy a new upgrade for, right? That was the old way of selling software. Um, now, companies like Microsoft and all others typically like to sell their software as a subscription. The reason is that when you buy it as a subscription, they include the updates to the software as part of your subscription. So all of the applications you use are being updated and you're getting all the new and latest versions all the time when you use those applications. They also include some additional tools. And in Microsoft 365, there's a chat support that's available. Um, some other services offer different kinds of support. They're all a little bit different, what they offer and what, they, what you can get. So let's take a little bit deeper dive into Microsoft 365. What are the plans? There's two plans. One is a personal plan for one user, and one is a family plan for up to six users. They don't ask for your identification to make sure that somebody is a member of the family, okay? So it's whatever you want to consider as family. It could be friends, it could be coworkers, it could be colleagues. It's for you and any other five additional people. What you get with the single user plan is you get the ability, all of the software for one person and you get one terabyte of storage. We're gonna go through all the applications that includes the applications you've probably heard about, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, um, but it also includes some additional applications and it includes all of the updates and the latest versions and many additional features in each of those applications that are only available to people that subscribe to Microsoft 365. Now, Microsoft does make free versions available of Word and PowerPoint. And so you can get free versions of those that you can use on the internet but they don't have all the features of the Microsoft 365 subscription. A family plan gives everybody the same applications. Everybody gets a terabyte per person. And there are some safety features 
uh, for family users that may want them to use them if you're, they're interested in those. Okay, what a personal and a family user get is they get to install all of the applications on uh, five different devices, iPhone, Windows, Mac, Android, iPad, whatever, you know, it'll install on all of those devices. And you can install Office 365 on all of your devices if you want to. And that's included with each user. So the family plan is by far the better savings because for $30 a year, you get the ability to have five additional people as part of your plan. And you just add them by sending an email through your Microsoft 365 web account that you get. Okay, so not everybody needs a subscription. Not everybody wants a subscription. So they do offer the other way to get Office, which is they offer a, um, a, a Office 2019, which is usually the home and student edition you might see. Sometimes it's sold with a PC and it's available for you to use with uh, one computer, okay? But it'll work on either a PC or a Mac. So if you want to use these applications on your smartphone or on your tablet and your computer, a 365 subscription is the way to go. If you just don't need to use the applications that much, there's no reason to really buy them. You can still, if someone sends you a Word document, you can still open up and read that Word document. If they send you a PowerPoint or a spreadsheet, uh, any computer, PC or Mac will have the ability to open up those documents. But the plans are, are really very, very effective. So what's really included with the plan? Well, you get Microsoft Word and you get a resource called Microsoft Editor, which is an editing tool that helps you edit your writing. It's more than just a spell checker. It checks your grammar. It checks your style of writing. It checks for um, inclusiveness in your writing. So you don't use words that are offensive or, or incorrect as well. And you get Excel and you get Microsoft Money and you get PowerPoint and Designer, and you get Outlook, and you get OneNote, you get OneDrive, and you get one terabyte, your vault, and a ransomware protection service. And you get Skype with 60 minutes. Okay, And you get apps that only run on Windows. They're older apps, and sometimes people use them, Publisher, Forms, Access, and Sway. So Gianna asked, is this just a sales pitch? Well. It can be, or it can't be. Uh, my goal is to help you understand what's included and to explain what's included. If you think it's not relevant, that's okay. It's, it's really up to each individual to decide whether these things are right for them or not. And my job is to help explain them to people. Okay, so one thing that's included with Microsoft 360, oh, go ahead, Patricia, you have a question. Yes, I had a, a MacBook Pro and um, it's the new one. How is that going to work with a MacBook? Should I um, go go ahead and get a, like a Microsoft type of, um, you know, like a PC that would, that would have Windows on it? No, you can use, um, all of these applications will run on a Mac. Um, Microsoft makes them available for you to download and use as part of your subscription uh, as, as included with you. So I, I actually use it on both a Windows PC and the Mac. And the, yeah, okay, and the Mac's OS. Okay, all right, thank you. See, my, Microsoft kind of decided uh, several years ago from a corporate strategy that they were in certain businesses. And one of the businesses they're in is a software business. And so they make their software available for people to use on as many different uh, technologies as possible. So yeah, you don't have to buy a Windows computer to use Microsoft 365. It'll work on a Mac. Bob? Yeah. What happens, what happens, let's say that uh, you need a, a license and I can give you one, okay? You're a friend of mine, I give you a license and you don't know how to download all this stuff to your devices. Can you call 
Microsoft and get help on the downloads? Usually there's no number you can call. You can't call and get support on the phone. Um, you know, there's, there's websites that give you instructions. There's links that give you instructions on how to download. Microsoft 365 is actually available through the Apple App Store, uh, through the Windows um, App Store. So that's one of the easiest ways to get it. But if someone sends, someone will, when you invite somebody through your plan, say you have a family plan, they will receive an email with the download link included in the email, just like they get for other software applications and other services. So, so if, I download, if I download it from um, Apple, uh, Bob, if I download it from the Apple store, then, then they will probably get support, those people that I help them with, right? No, it's it's a Microsoft product, so it's going to be any support for Microsoft. Now, if they're, they're having trouble installing an application on their Mac, um, Apple will probably try and help them out because if they're, they're, they're there to help people install applications on Macs. Okay. But they won't actually help them with how to use Microsoft 365 or anything after they download it. Okay, so there is a chat support. In each application in Microsoft, the help function has an additional feature. Instead of just giving you access to help information, it does give you the ability to request um, a chat support from Microsoft. So that's one of the extra things you get with Microsoft 365. You get the Microsoft editor, what Microsoft calls it an intelligent writing assistant. I guess that's as good a name as any. Um, it is built into Word. It is possible to use with the version of Outlook you get with Microsoft 365 and it'll work in email. It also will work with the Microsoft Edge web browser whenever you're writing anything in a web application. And it also can be uh, installed as an add-on to the Google Chrome browser. So if you use Gmail, you can actually use the Microsoft editor, intelligent writing assistant, you know, as an add-on to your Gmail Chrome browser. And what it includes is not just spelling and grammar check. It includes advanced grammar, clarity, conciseness, vocabulary, punctuation, um, and, and other features that are, uh, that are things that you would normally want. Now, Microsoft makes this because a lot of the people that buy Microsoft software work in the world of business or organizations. And unfortunately, writing skills have deteriorated over time. Um, and a lot of people just don't know how to phrase things correctly. And so uh, Microsoft has made this feature available in Microsoft 365 um, and, uh, to, to not only help businesses, but also to kind of lock in their product as the one that businesses and organizations choose to use. I have, um, it bothered me. It was like, it kept, you know, my standards don't have to be business. And so I, I don't use it. I, you can go without, you know, I can do spell check and the thesaurus and that sort of thing. But it just, it was too picky for me. It, it doesn't fit everybody. You know, there's, there's no one size fits all in the world of computers, Nancy. So your ability to see what it does and make a choice was the right thing to do, no matter what it was. That's really the right thing to do for anybody is to look at the software um, see if it does what they want it to do for them and make a choice as to whether it's the right tool or not. Because it, it's kind of like, you know, buying a pot. You know, if a pot doesn't help you do things and make the right kind of meals, then the pot has no purpose. Uh, computer software is just a tool. And if the tool doesn't help you do anything better, then why use it? It's not useful. And that, that's okay. That's okay. It doesn't mean just because it's computers, it's automatically good. It just means it's there. It's another tool to use. Okay. Um, you do get OneNote, but OneNote's a free application anyway. And so, but you do get OneNote, you do get uh, support for OneNote through their chat. Uh, that's part of Microsoft 365. It includes the full uh, version of Outlook. When Microsoft has Outlook on computers, it really is just calling it mail now in Windows. 10 and Windows 11 it used to be called Outlook and to eliminate that confusion, 
They just call it the mail application. On your Windows computer, you have a mail application, a contacts application, and a calendar. Outlook integrates those three features together so that in, within one application, you have all of your mail. And it's not just mail for Microsoft. You can connect your Microsoft Outlook tool to Gmail, to Apple Mail, to any type of email account you want to use. And it gives you the ability to organize your contacts using images and pictures with them as well, um, and using multiple calendars as well, and gives the ability to save information. They give you a free email account as part of your subscription too. I, I think they still do. And then you get OneDrive Cloud Storage. Microsoft's cloud storage is called OneDrive. And you do get five gigabytes of free. Um, all the clouds are pretty similar, but OneDrive is integrated very, very tightly, meaning it's really easy to use within Microsoft applications. So if you're using Word or Excel or PowerPoint or OneNote or other things like that, um, it's very, very easy to save your information in OneDrive. And if it's in OneDrive, you can also have it. I, I recommend for those of you that aren't familiar with OneDrive, Wade offers a OneDrive class that he explains OneDrive in quite a bit of detail um, that may help you understand it. But it gives you a huge amount of storage. It gives you one terabyte um, per user. And you can use OneDrive on your iPhone, on your Android phone, and on your iPad. So it'll work. You can download and install the application. And it's probably more space than you currently have in your computer hard drive. It's also a backup solution that is included with this as well. Some of the added features that Microsoft includes with OneDrive, and in the backup class, I go through this and I show people there's a a OneDrive PC folder backup service that's included with your 365 subscription. It'll back up your desktop, your pictures, and your documents folders on your computer and synchronize them automatically between your PC and OneDrive. So it, it's a, it designed to be a backup that you can use for everything. They also have an additional security feature called the OneDrive Vault. It's a folder in your OneDrive account that requires a, a, a two, what's called two-factor authentication, which means even though somebody might be able to get to your OneDrive account, unless they know the password for this vault, they won't be able to get into it. So it's a place where you can keep important documents if you want to and still have them, them available to you in the cloud. So they give you some of these additional features as part of your 365 subscription. And they give you something called family safety. Now, if you have children, um, family members like this because it does give you things like parental control uh, over um, what you know, people can do with their computers and their Xbox games. Um, it has content filters so you can stop and, and allow people, your children and your family from going to certain websites. And it gives you the ability to turn on location sharing uh, for people where you install an app on a phone and they can't turn it off, you know, so you have the ability. So it's, it's there, whether it's something you can use or not is totally up to you, but they include it with your family 365 subscription. And for some people, it's, it's really good. One of my favorite features, and I use this a lot because I do a lot of slides, is, is the premium content library that comes with Microsoft 365. And I'm going to show you some of these. It's, it's a set of, it's a library of stock photos, photographs that you can use in any Word or PowerPoint document or Excel spreadsheet. And that includes not only photos, it includes icons, symbols for things, artwork, illustrations, um, and includes templates. And in PowerPoint, uh, you get an additional tool called the PowerPoint Designer, which gives you the ability to use um, a title or a text in a slide, and the PowerPoint will automatically 
uh, read whatever it is you've entered and try and interpret and suggest slide photos and layouts for you automatically. So it actually has like having a graphic designer built into your PowerPoint application. So these are all tools that are part of, of the application. So they, they really exist in the Word uh, basics. We show you a little bit about how to use some of the stock photos in the PowerPoint class, we do it as well. And uh, in the Word Intermediate, we typically show you a little bit about the, um, the editor, if you're interested in, in learning more about those features. Okay, so any questions so far? Yeah, Patricia. Hi, sorry, I had to unmute. Um, That's okay. Let's see, I, I just have a question. Um, I feel like Rip Van Winkle. The last time I had, um, well, I had a, a, a functioning 360 well it wasn't 365 then it came with the computer that i had and i had a dell that had that had you know all the microsoft office uh software on there and then i had um a desktop which was an imac and so i work cross-platform because i do you know I, I do a lot of different things not just office work but um so now uh i'm dealing with um 365 and it comes with um, a variety of things that I can subscribe to. And so what I'm looking for is the old office and I'm not sure if it's gonna, I'm not sure if the 365 works differently on my iMac or not, or I don't have the iMac anymore. I have the um, MacBook. Um, they have like a individual family, you know, uh, and then something beyond that and a professional. Which one has the closest to the old office? Well, well when you say old office, um, can you explain a little bit about what you mean? Not really, because I took it for granted. It just had a lot more uh, things on the, on the, okay. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even know what it's called anymore. Oh, the menu okay. on top, and the menu on top of the, you know, where you're working like on Word or something like that. It has much more, many more things there to um, help you create a document that you want to do, you know, whether it's a creative thing or if it's just straightforward, you know, typing a term paper or something like that. Um, and I don't see all of those things with the basic 365 anymore. So I, I just, you know, quit and, you know, sure. found this it, class and I decided, okay, <laughs> maybe I can learn something. And I think it was 2013, um, maybe it was 2009, uh, but I can't remember. I think it was 2013, Microsoft changed the application look and design of all of their office applications. Um, the okay. old menus and the old ways of using them changed to something new that they call the ribbon. Um, okay. And they're, they're all the features are there. In fact, there's many more features. It's just that there oh, okay. are so many features in Word, PowerPoint, and Excel that they were cluttering up the menus too much. And so they came up with a, an approach called the ribbon, which changes. And I'll show you in PowerPoint and Word when we look at it. Um, but all the features are there. They're just in different places than you were probably used to seeing them. Right, right. Okay. And um, that's probably, they probably have different things available for different levels of 365. And that's my hunch. Am I correct? It's when you get 365, you get the full package. It's just a matter of how much you want to use. They try and make it a little simpler for people to do some basic things, but it depends. Everybody has a different definition of basic. So it, right. it's a Right, but, but yeah, they try and make it easier for you to do things in the Word class, uh, in the Word Basics class, in the PowerPoint Basics class. Uh, you know, I'd recommend those because those show you how to do those things. I don't do the Excel class, uh, but they're- Sure, they're also, sure. Yeah. yeah, that was, yeah, because I was comfortable with the old Word. And so right. maybe my, right. my, you know, ability to use it is a little above I, I don't have any official name for it, but but I call it informally. I call it the Rip Van Winkle effect. You know, if you that's don't, exactly that's what I yeah, call it. Yeah. If, yeah. If you don't keep up to date on something, uh, it, and you go back 
two, three, four, five years, it looks completely different sometimes. Right. That, right. That's all. And that's the, what I'm feeling. All, all right. the features, all the features you were able to do are there, and many, many more too. Okay, but they they didn't have like a graduation of it. They didn't have like the the like the bottom six ninety nine a month. No, no, it's one or, plan, and you get everything. Yeah, if you one plan? they do have the, they okay. do have the the, the office twenty nineteen home and student edition that doesn't include some of the advanced features like the Microsoft editor or the stock photo library, but it includes oh, all good. the other features. Oh, good. Cause that's, that's kind of what I was trying to ask is yeah, how far you, you need to, to go. Yeah, up. Cause you don't, you can buy it. You can use it on one computer. Okay. All right. Carl has a question. Yeah. I see Carl. I know Carl's had his hand up. Yep. Thanks Carl for waiting. Oh, that's fine now, Bob. Uh, Bob, there's one slide there where you had parental control and share location and you can't turn it off. What do you mean? Share location and you can't turn it off. Does that mean I can have my kids, my grandchildren running around Toronto and I know where they are and they can't turn it off? Is that what you said? That's right. If you that install the fantastic. Microsoft, what? That is fantastic. Well, it depends on your point of view. If you're the kid, maybe not. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't think you said that. I did not it, believe it, you said it, that. That is amazing. For the parent. Okay. For the parent. And now, I, I don't know whether kids have figured a workaround, but the idea being is that parents want to know where their kids are. Like I, for example, I have a friend that has a, a, a uh, young child that's uh, seven years old that has type 1 diabetes. And they, they want to know where they are all the time. Okay, so they, they're seven, so they got them a smartphone, they installed the Microsoft, you know, uh, family tools with the location sharing, and the kid can't turn it off. But so the parents know where they are all times, you know. So okay. that's a lot Thank better. you. I wasn't but, sure about that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's a hack somewhere, but but I don't know about it. Okay, so um, I'll show you a few features uh, in some uh, on my Windows 10 desktop. Most people still have Windows 10. I'm just curious, anybody have Windows 11 that they're using now? Okay, because we're we're debating what we should do about offering Windows 11 classes and uh, how much we should start offering it. Windows 10 is still good for another four years, but Windows 11 is out. And if you buy a new computer, you're probably gonna get Windows 11 installed on it. Okay, so what you're looking at is my Windows 10 desktop. And I have Office installed on it. If you're ever curious and, and you wanna try it out, you can go to the Start menu and an application that Microsoft has called, called the Microsoft Store. And the Microsoft Store will keep track of your subscription for you. Um, if I try and buy or download Microsoft 365, they'll have a lot of things. The Microsoft Store is where you can download a lot of things. I'm just going to click on apps here in the left-hand column. And here's Microsoft 365. It comes up pretty quickly because it's one of their premier applications. So if I select it and it'll explain a few things about what it is and what it does, um, and it'll give me the opportunity to purchase it as a single user or as a, as a person that I can, uh, somebody I can download it with. So um, I have the ability to explore it and take a look at it anytime I want to. So that's one way you can get more details. I'm going to send you links to the Microsoft 365 website out of, out of class. And so it explains what it does. You can buy a personal subscription or you can buy a family subscription, who makes it, how you can use it, um, how it gets installed. If you, you can install it directly from, from here. But one of the great things also about Microsoft um, 365 is that it has great translation tools if you ever use another language. I have it already installed on my computer. Um, so I'm going to open up the PowerPoint application first. I do probably use PowerPoint more than I use any of the other um, applications in Microsoft 365. When you open up a, a PowerPoint 
or any Microsoft application, they all have a very similar look to them in terms of the design. When you open up the home screen, you'll see a list of recent um, documents you've worked on. You'll have the ability to just open up a blank presentation. But I'm gonna just open up a blank one because that's usually what people do. And then you see the ribbon, okay? The ribbon is this, this area right here that has a lot of design, a lot of tools that are in it. And then you see a menu. Generally, you're going to be on the home menu, uh, but I wanna show you Microsoft 365 features. Um, as you change the menus, you'll see something different in the ribbon. The ribbon changes depending on what you're actually doing in your document. So I just have a blank slide and let's see what is, um, this is May still, right? So let's type in flowers because April showers are supposed to bring May flowers, right? And I'll hit the return key here or I'll click outside of this. And this design ideas, this is the designer tool that's included as part of your 365 subscription. They will come up with ideas and suggestions for a design for the slide. And all you have to do is click on it and it changes the slide automatically to that design. You didn't have to go find a photo. You didn't have to go format the slide. If I prefer this one, I can change to this one. Um, and it used the word flowers to kind of highlight the fact that I was probably interested in artwork that had to do with flowers in some way. So the designer is not just throwing stuff out there randomly. It's actually using whatever you type into your slide to try and figure out what you might want for a design idea. You don't have to take them. You can reject them if you want to. Now I'm gonna create a new slide and I'm going to add a title to it. I'll call it, um, well, let's call it daisies, okay? And that's the title of my slide, okay? So it'll get, it'll actually recognize daisies and go get ideas for daisies. I can pick one of these design ideas if I like them, or I can insert a picture from the stock photo library. That's one of the powers of the 365 subscription. Um, and so uh, it's, it's, it's one of the great tools. Now, Patricia has which version of 365? There is no different version of 365. You have a subscription to Microsoft 365, and it's one subscription that includes all of the latest versions of the software. So unlike older ways, you would go buy a copy of software, and then you'd have to upgrade it every year, couple of years, five years, never. 365 automatically downloads the latest versions of a subscription. Oh, I have, I have a one year subscription that renews annually. If you buy the monthly plan, you pay a little bit more over a year period, but I use it so frequently and I've used it for so long. I buy the year subscription and I have a family plan and I share it with three other members of my family. Then answer the question, it sounds like that, that was what you wanted to know. Okay, so that's, that's what I do. But you can subscribe month by month, but you'll pay for 12 months. If you subscribe for the year, you get at least a savings of one month, I think. Maybe it's a, a little bit discount if you subscribe for a year. Okay, so I don't like these daisy, these design ideas. I wanna find a picture. So I will go to the insert menu. And when I go to pictures, I have an option called stock images. This is what's included in 365. So I can click on stock images and it'll open up my the library of Microsoft artwork that I can get to. Okay, and I can use this any way I want to in any document slide I create. There's about half a million pictures in their images library. So if I type in the word daisies, um, it'll pull up some. Now the suggestions that I got from the designer were only part of the suggestion. 
it shows me some new ones that have been added. So um, if I, I wonder why the rabbit, oh, the rabbit's eating daisies. Okay, that's why. I was trying to figure that one out. So if I click on uh, this picture of daisies and I click on enter. So this whole stock library is available. I can just click on insert and it'll insert the picture, download it, and I'll get new design ideas based on this picture that I can pick from. And if I don't like these, I can see more. I wanna see more. So I have the ability to see all kinds of pictures that I might be interested in, in just changing. And just a click changes the artwork automatically. So now I have the ability to just you know, modify the pictures and, and change things just from using the stock photo library. That's under insert. Now, in addition to pictures in the stock images, you also get other features like icons that are symbols for things, whole library of icons. You get the ability to look at cut out people if you want to and use them in different ways. You get the access ability to use stickers and access stickers that you might want to use. There's even videos that are available that you can use for short videos for inserting um, in different things. And so these videos, are, they'll give you a little preview of the video as it plays when you hover over it. There's illustrations that are included. Um, so if you're somebody that uses a lot of artwork in your um, slides or documents or other places, uh, the stock photo library by itself might pay for the subscription is all. That's, that's the only thing to think about. And there's also something called cartoon people where you can take pieces of of people and make them into uh, whole people if you want to and modify them in different ways. So that's one thing the stock photo library gives you. It gives you that ability to, to take a look at different things and, and, uh, and use different stock images from different ways. In the help menu, um, in addition to being able to get help on anything which is standard with all versions, you also get the ability to contact support so that you can start a chat session with a Microsoft support representative if you're looking for help in some way. Now, all of your Microsoft applications give you the ability to turn on autosave. And when you turn on autosave, you can use it with OneDrive. I actually have two OneDrives. I'm not sure why that's showing up, but I can do a test 365 slide, okay? And save it, and it'll save it in my iCloud drive automatically, and it'll save updates. It'll also save versions. So if I make changes to the slide, I can go back and see previous versions that I have of it. So that's one of the features of using OneDrive for storage, um, if you choose to use it that way. Um, if you're ever interested in what the benefits are in Microsoft 365, this is my login. It will show you your name that you're logged into your Microsoft subscription. And the diamond shows you um, benefits. It lets you know um, what are the tools that you can use um, it shows you all of the apps and benefits that are available to you uh, from Microsoft 365. There's a scanning tool in the Office mobile app that's included. Um, you can uh, you know, share things with people through OneCloud. You can OneDrive, you can go to the editor, we'll take a look. And you can even store photos that you take on either an Android or an iPhone in your uh, one, uh, OneDrive cloud storage. And then there's the premium feature. So it'll explain the benefits for you um, that you can utilize in doing things that you can attach. So um, there's tools that are called Read Aloud, where if you use Microsoft you know, Outlook, there's a Read Aloud button that'll read things back. It does that in Word as well. Um, and so if you want to see, have a, um, it says this is an example of how you uh, would read aloud a draft document. 
Um, you can build, you know, your designer tools, the illustrations, um, different things about uh, rehearsing the slideshow with the coach. And you can even di use dictation um, and use the editor for writing. So it turns, it shows you what your benefits are. If, if they're useful to you, then a 365 subscription is right for you. If they're not, it, it doesn't make any difference, okay? So let me show you um, a little bit of what the Word, Word gives you the same stock image library capability. Uh, they're all there in Word. Um, and Word also gives you the ability to uh, open up what's called the editor. Um, and the editor is available for you to look at editing text. It'll score whatever it is you've written. It'll give you the ability to see not only spelling and grammar corrections, but also refinements in clarity and conciseness and punctuation and vocabulary, if you're interested in those two. So it gives you the ability to see those different features and what you might be interested in using in Microsoft Word. Um, also, in addition to all of your uh, things that you can do, you also get access to a huge library of online templates. Uh, Word has online templates for almost anything from a flyer uh, to a newspaper. And the subscription includes access to more templates than you would get from a non-subscription. So if you're looking for a flyer, there's all these templates. These are pre-designed documents that you can download and use in whatever way you want to uh, for anything you might be interested in. So you get a huge amount of resources that are capabilities in the Microsoft tools that you may not have realized are there. Now, do you need them? That's really the debate. I mean, if you write a lot of documents, if you do some slides, if you do um, spreadsheets, you know, you have the ability to take advantage of these formats. But if you don't do that much of it, then it may not be something that you need. If you have a Mac, you have built-in applications. My, I, Apple prevent, includes pages, Keynote, and Numbers with every Mac, iPhone, and iPad that they sell. Uh, Pages is their word processor. Keynote is their uh, slide presentation tool and numbers is their spreadsheet. And you've got Google Docs. You know, Google has slides, they have docs, they have um, a, a, num a spreadsheet tool that's available all using your Google account. Okay, so they'll, they'll, they all have capabilities depending on what you think is going to work most effectively. Now, I mean, Microsoft's been around in the application business for quite a while. And so in most cases, if there's a feature that's available in a word processor, Microsoft Word will definitely have it. Um, and then the other major word processors may or may not have it. Like the ability to create an index in a document is something that Microsoft Word has but doesn't exist in very many other word processors. Um, the ability to do animations in slides exists across many tools. It's just that some of the tools that Microsoft has are more sophisticated in their capabilities because they're used by so many people in so many situations that they wanna take advantage of them. So those are some of the, the differences. Now, there's even free, you know, versions. Every version of, of, of Microsoft Windows includes a word processor called WordPad. Um, you may have never seen it, but it's in uh, the search tool if you ever go search for it. It is a really stripped down version of Microsoft Word. But if all you type is one letter or so every so often, it may be more than sufficient for you to use in whatever it is you want to use and take advantage of, okay? So like I say, there's lots of alternatives out there. It's just that as you, and as you get bigger, as you grow and you start using more features, then the features of 365 may be worthwhile. You know, if you're looking for a backup service, a backup service usually costs $67 a year 
And if you already have OneDrive, you know, why not use that for your backup capability as well? So there are some resources that you could take advantage of with those types of things.